I'm going to show you the easiest and cheapest way that I have found to put a trolling motor on a canoe. So if you want to put a trolling motor kind of like that on a canoe kind of like this, the easiest way I have found is to use two two by fours, one that's going to go across the back of the canoe, cut the other two by four really short. I'll give you the dimensions in just a little bit. And then use C clamps to attach it to the canoe. Let me take that seat off to give you a better view. Okie doke. So you've got a C-clamp over here. These are $5 Walmart C-clamps. You can use anything you have at home. And we got another C-clamp over here. And these things are cranked down. They attach right here to this lip on the canoe on both sides, as you can see. They hold down a two by four. And one bad thing about this type of canoe is that the seat is really close to the back. So there's not a lot of space to work here, especially when you put that green canoe seat on here. It makes for very little working space. So what I do instead is I attach this and just leave it on. And then that way I can just put the seat on and off. I don't have to keep taking this on and off. Even if I don't use the, the motor over there, this is going to stay on the canoe because this extra 2x4 and these little C-clamps right here, that's not going to add a lot of weight. These are 4-inch C-clamps, meaning that the gap between the C part, like the top and the bottom, is about 4 inches. And that's all you really need for this device right here with the 2x4 being an inch and a half and this being barely anything right over here. So this is about 9 inches in length from that side to that side, kind of like a transom would be on a boat. That's all I really need to put that motor on. That's a 55 pound thrust trolling motor. In a few minutes, I'm going to be going traveling up and we're gonna actually take this canoe out in a canal to see how it maneuvers through tight spaces. This is a 17 and a half foot canoe. It's pretty big. You can easily put three people in here comfortably, but I'm gonna test it out with just myself in the canoe today. So this is a more realistic look at what it's gonna be like. Once it's in the water, we're gonna drop it all the way down so that the handle's around here. You'll see that just a moment when I take it out in the water. But this is how it attaches right there. I've got it on the ground right now to be a little more stable. But it attaches here to this two x four and it's really, really solid. The reason why it's so solid is because underneath this two x four here, the one that goes this way, I've got five screws. So here's what it looks like underneath. You've got one, two, three, four, five screws going up into this one right here. Then I put another screw, three inch screw at an angle going down this way. Another one over here and another one back here on this side. So overall, you're looking at eight screws, three going in at an angle from this two by four down to this one, and then five going up to stabilize that. Now, if it breaks, it, it really doesn't matter. Obviously, you don't want to break on the water. It'll probably get loose before it actually completely breaks. But those are just three inch deck screws I had laying around. Everybody's got two by fours laying around scrap wood. If you don't, you need to get some because it comes in handy from time to time, as you can see here. The only thing I had to pay for are these C clamps. If you have C clamps already, then this is basically a free setup. All you need is about three inch deck screws or some kind of screw that's not going to rust, two C clamps, and these two by fours like this. This is nine inches. I can't give you the length on here because this two by four will depend on the width of your canoe toward the back of it. It really depends on the type of canoe you have. Before making this particular video you're watching right now, I wanted to have some experience with this. I didn't just wanna put this together and say, oh yeah, it works. So I did take it out on the water, like I said, one time. What I noticed was that everything worked well with the motor, the connection, We've got the 12 volt battery there, but I ran into a problem with too many things in front of me when I'm sitting back here on the seat. I was sitting here, it wasn't the weight distribution that was the problem, it was the leg room you have back here. Because as you know, you've got your rods, your tackle boxes. I had my minnow bucket, which is right there, so I could reach them. I had a small cooler and right in front of this bar right here. And it was just, it was too packed back here. And one of the big reasons why that was is actually because of that battery right there. And I'll show you how it was set up. So the minnow bucket, that's no problem. Obviously you can use a floater bucket and keep that outside of the canoe. You can put the minnow bucket up there if you don't mind reaching over things to grab them every single time or just not use minnows at all, just go to artificial. So if we remove that, that'll give up a lot of space for leg room. But it's also a problem because the battery is up and over here. You can see the cooler there that I put fish on ice if I keep them. I keep my tackle and just personal things, cell phone and stuff in here attached to a paracord, super practical. Now, these things are fine. You can reach over and work with those things if you need to. But this minnow bucket, let's just say, yeah, we're not gonna use minnows, but there's still a problem because you do wanna use this whole space if you're in a canoe, if you can. And I put the battery, which is a DC battery, heavy battery, over to the right side to offset the weight of this back here being back on the left side of this canoe. Problem 
with the battery being back so far is not necessarily the weight because a canoe like this can really carry the weight and it can it can handle it pretty well that's not a problem the reason why i had to have the battery back so far is because these wires only reach so far they can barely reach there so i actually had these underneath one of my legs and put into here to attach the battery it wasn't a great setup but it was the first time and i wasn't sure how it was really going to work so i solved that problem with these got some electrical tape here these are lead lead extensions here for a trolling motor they're 10 feet long that i'm going to install right now if those are 10 feet long and these leads can reach to about this point here i'm guessing i can get that battery all the way up close to this front seat which not only is going to make sure the canoe is even more level than it was it wasn't bad but it's going to really free up some space back there for a leg room and you can put other things there if you want to so i'm going to attach that right now to the leads on the trolling motor and then up to the battery up here and see how far ahead we can get that so it sets up really nice it balances well but it also saves you a lot of space in the back all right so you can see this is on electrical tape there was some hardware i didn't just tape them on like that worked out pretty well it took a little bit of ingenuity because the clamps or the little metal pieces that connect weren't exactly the same size but anybody can work through that so the battery's there box is there but these leads i mean look at this i'm stretching them out here you have to keep in mind too the head of that trolling motor is going to be much lower in the water which will actually allow for these leads here these wires to go further i'm pretty much to the end of my kayak or excuse me I'm pretty much to the end of my canoe right here okay so I'm in this little canal here trying to maneuver there's parts where it's five or six feet across and there's parts where it's as wide as you can see now 30 40 feet so it just depends and I'm finding that maneuvering this is actually pretty good as long as you plan ahead. You can see the battery way up there. The wire is running along here. I need to find a way to tidy that up a little bit so it's not on the floor creating a mess. But with a second person or even a dog in the front, I'm pretty sure that this would work even better. I don't think it's too uneven. It doesn't look like the front of the canoe is too much higher than I am back here in the rear of the canoe. And I'm not a heavy person, so that helps too. But with another person in front or even a dog, you could even move that battery back a little bit. You wouldn't need to have it all the way up there. A 55 pound thrust trolling motor, that's, that's overkill for a canoe, even a, a big canoe like this. But it's much better to have too much power with your trolling motor than to be underpowered, especially in the wind. I bought this trolling motor for my 12 foot John boat. And it moves that just tremendously. I mean, I've even gone up current in rivers with it when the water's either at medium level or, or slightly lower. I mean, when it's really high, you can't, but it's, it's really, really nice for pushing things along. So if I load down this canoe with another person, some more gear, like a middle bucket, more rods, tackle, that kind of stuff, even a dog and another person, this thing would move it like there's you know, like no one's business. It, it really moves along really nice. And I'm glad that I got it. A big trolling motor. It's the biggest one you can get a 55 pound thrust and still have a 12 volt battery rather than doubling them up and going to 24. As far as I'm concerned, maybe that's changed now. I don't know. But I got the biggest one possible because of that. Whoop. <laughs> Hit a log there, couldn't see it. And, uh, and it really moves it along nice. So my advice to you is to get the biggest trolling motor you can if you can so I'm cruising along here in this canal no problem at all turning corners with this thing turns really nice going to the left going over to the right of course in a canoe especially by yourself with not a lot of weight up there you want to take it easy when you turn no sharp turns wide turns only and once I make it back into the more shallower parts and more narrow parts of this little canal, I don't think there's gonna be a problem. Plus, you should always bring a <laughs> always bring a paddle along, obviously, just in case. You can see how it really narrows up here as we scoot through here. So this will be interesting as we scoot along, but so far I'm very pleased. Not to mention, I don't have the battery here, I don't have my middle bucket anymore, like I did last time. 
I've got lots of leg room. It's very comfortable to sit here. And the person up front would have just as much leg room too if, if somebody else were to be in here. So it's, it's actually really comfortable going out of canoes. I've canoed, I don't know, hundreds, maybe thousands of hours, I don't know, with a paddle going up to the Boundary Waters, um, mountain lakes in, in Europe and where I used to live. And I have a lot of experience doing that. However, I don't have a lot of experience with a, with a trolling motor. I've had this canoe for a long time. I'm getting a new one soon, another one that's smaller than this. And it just dawned on me, why don't I put my trolling motor on my canoe? It would save a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so I, I, so I did that. And you can find a lot of videos on YouTube with fancier canoe, canoe mounts for trolling motors, like way fancier than this two by four right here. But if you have C-clamps and a couple 2x4s and screws laying around, you can literally do this for free. If you don't have any 2x4s or any C-clamps or screws, yeah, you got to buy those. But even that, even that can cost you pennies on the dollar compared to some of the, the mounts that I've seen. And I don't have a problem with people spending more money on a good, high quality, maybe stainless steel or aluminum mount. But then you're dealing with sometimes screwing into the aluminum on your canoe, which I would not advise you to do, or you're dealing with, some people have welded their mounts together, and I don't have a welder, I don't have the skills to do that either. But uh, if you have um, a drill, screws, and, and a uh, couple two by fours, you can, you can easily do this. I was surprised at how strong it is. One modification I might make on the mount itself is right here. So you can see there's a little gap here and a little gap over there. That gap, I might put cut some 45s like triangles and stick them in there just to add support to this two by four, the transom part. I don't think I'm gonna need that because right now, I mean, this thing is rock solid. If you shook this, if you moved it, it is is not going anywhere. So I, I might put that in there just to add some support, but I don't think it's necessary. I, I would literally do it just in case or if I were to go on a trip or something, I didn't want to have to deal with fixing anything. But honestly, this is more than necessary as far as I'm concerned, just to move this canoe. So if you'd like to see how I rig up a kayak or a little John boat to fish, to be successful on the water, check out these videos over here. I'll see you next time.